everyone this is my today i'll show you how to make a list in tuples and why we need them first i'll start my python control n now in the previous video we learned what are data types comments and variables we saw how we can make a variable for example like this and how we can use them let's run this one you see that now what if we wanted to store multiple values in the same variable we instead we would have to do it like this but instead of doing that you can use a list now what is a list in python a list is a bunch of data which is separated by commas and stored within square brackets like these now how do you make a list to make a list, we have to define a variable. I'll keep this. Keep an equal sign. So these steps are familiar. Now the next step is to put these square brackets. And inside that, put whatever you, data you want. I'll start with Monday. And then put a comma and followed by a space if you want. Then you have to start entering the next data and so on. Okay. Friday, Saturday, and finally Sunday. Now, what did we do? We set up a variable equal to square brackets where inside the square brackets we have some data. Now, let's say we want to print this list. How do we do it? We can do it like this. We would get the whole list, including the commas, quotes, in this case single quotes, and the square brackets. Now, let's say we want to print only a specific value from that list. How do we do that? To do that, we keep the name of the list, in this case days, followed by the square brackets, opening and closing, and inside the square brackets, we enter the index number. That is the number of location in the list. For example, if I wanted to print Monday, I'll have to enter the location number as zero. You see that? We got Monday. Now, you may have noticed that I to access the first element in the list, I entered zero. Why is that? In computers, the first number, counting number, is zero. Computers count from zero. In the old days, that's how they were. Today, computers can also count from one, but because it has been using zero for so long, uh, nobody bothered changing it. Now, if I wanted to actually the second element of the list, I would just change this to 1. Tuesday. Same for Wednesday. I have to put that in 2. Thursday, 3. Friday, 4. And so on. 5 and 6. Now, let's say we want to print all of the elements like this, but without the single quotes, commas, and square brackets. How do we do that? In this case, we would use a for loop. 
Now, how do we make a for loop? We do it like this. For i in days, colon, enter, print i. How about instead of i put day, just to make sense. Day, day. You see that? Now you may notice that it started with Sunday and then worked to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then to Sunday again. Why is that? Let's print the index as well. You see that? There was no index for Sunday, yet it started with it. That is the custom for most lists, but sometimes it could work the other way around, not include Sunday. Now, let's say we want to get two values or more values, two or more values. Instead of getting one like that, let's say we just want to get Tuesday, I mean Wednesday, followed by every other value. We do that by putting 2 followed by a colon. You see that? Wednesday was at index 2, and because we kept the colon, it follows everything else. Now, let's say we only want Wednesday through Saturday. How do we do that? Well, we know the index of Saturday. That is... 5 and let's see but look we only were able to print to Friday not Saturday why is that this is because in this format the two the first index is inclusive whereas the second index is exclusive meaning we set the index to Saturday right and because the second index was exclusive it excluded Saturday in the output so if you want Saturday, we have to set it to the index above, that is to Sunday. You see that? Now we got it. Now, not one thing. If you would want to change a value in the list without actually creating the whole list again, we do it like this. Days followed by the index you want to change. Let's select Monday. Set that to equal to some other value. It has done it, but we haven't printed anything, so let's print it out. You see that? It replaced Monday with Mon. This is because the list is mutable, meaning you can change the values. Now let's move on to tuples. Now what is a tuple? A tuple is the same thing like a list, except the square brackets are replaced with just round brackets, like that. So I'll just create another list again. This time I'll keep numbers. Now we'll print this. You see that? We got the list. Now, unlike days, the list, IDs, the tuple is immutable, meaning you can't change the values. Let's try it. Let's try setting the zeroth index to something else. You see that? It gives a type error saying that a tuple object does not support item assignment. Now, why do we need both versions of this list? 
as in like the one where you can have it mutable and the one where you cannot have it mutable, immutable. Now let's say in the days list, we may want to change something in this. Like instead of keeping Monday, you can just keep its abbreviation, Mon. But for IDs, there isn't any reason for an ID to change, right? So it's better to leave it as a tuple to provide, to make sure nothing goes wrong. Now, how about printing specific parts? Like I showed here with the list, you can do the same with tuples. First, I'll get rid of this. You see that? We got the zeroth item of the tuple. Now, this is a really, really important thing to know. Lists and tuples, as well as a few other things, will always start counting from zero. Let's look at strings, just to make sure. So let's set text equal to hello world. Now if you want to get this letter, the first L, we could use the same method we used for lists and tuples. And also, for strings as well, you have to start counting from zero. You see that? L. So lists and tuples are really important. If you'd like to store multiple values in the same variable and tuples, you can do the same thing, except you won't be able to have to change the value. And that is useful for IDs. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.